Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, as I offer these words this Easter morning, I pray that you will see before you a, a, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, we have been preparing for Easter Sunday since Lazarus Sunday, since Palm Sunday, and making our way on Good Friday, of course, Monday, Thursday to today. And I've been thinking about my Easter Sunday sermon throughout that time. Now, unfortunately for you all, or fortunately, uh, as the case may be, I've also been listening to Cormac McCarthy's South of the Border series, and I'm in the middle of book two. So what you'll hear today is kind of a mix-up of Cormac McCarthy and the gospel. And so bear with me here as I try to offer a few words uh, about today. It seems to me that on this day, above all other days, God's voice is not heard in a whisper of wind. The glory of the trees and the stones and uh, are no longer sacred. Those, those voices are no longer sacred as if they had been, but that God cannot be even heard at the river's edge today. God is not everywhere, but this Sunday, God is particularly present in Jesus Christ as he is resurrected from the tomb. It is not an everywhere kind of celebration, but a particular God on a particular day that we give thanks for. The voice of God is powerful in the images and the Gospels as we read up to this moment, a a voice that rents shrouds, it, it creates storm clouds and sends fear into everybody's heart. This is the power that has been Uh, that is rent asunder this world to bring about the new heaven and earth. Even the bravest soldiers, we are told, quake at this event. The voice knocks men and women to their knees and opens the graves of all, we are told, uh, and witnesses saw the ghosts of their ancestors walking in the streets. On this day, we are afraid of the power, timid of that power which defeats death, a power so great that you and I no longer have to fear death and brings life from the grave, a risen Jesus Christ. And yet we desire this God, right? This is the God we long for. We often think of the loving God. This is the loving God, but it is also the full power of God put to work on Jesus' behalf, and then upon ours. Like Moses before and Mary in our gospel, we dare not draw near for some fear of what this might mean for us. And yet, Christians, you and I claim on this day, since the very first Easter, that everything has changed. Everything. That all categories of life, all categories of love, have become rent asunder so that Jesus upon his cross and his ultimate love and sacrifice may turn our faces to this one moment in history which redefines every other moment. For while yet you and I were far off, God gave himself for us. This is the God who is friends of sinners and heretics and has given his life for all. And in so doing, as many have proclaimed before you and I, death has lost its sting. This has become, for us who believe, who proclaim the good news of Christ, who dare to baptize in his name, this has become a category which defines God, the church, us, our daily lives. Not just the one hour that we spend in church, but the other six days and 23 hours of our life. It is God's grace alone to which we are bound. And if there were no God, I would suggest no death upon the cross, no resurrection, 
then there would be no witnesses. But there are witnesses. Mary, the women at the tomb, the disciples. If there is no God, there can be everyone's opinion about how things are. But on Easter Sunday, given the crucifixion and resurrection, we say this is the truth. This is the God that we have experienced and known over generations. This is the uniqueness of our witness. We are all on this day a witness again, if you will, to a world that is turned over so that the gospel and its paradoxes become true for us. Those who wish to save their life must lose it by giving it to others. Those who wish to be great must become the lowest of all. The final act of Jesus upon the cross and resurrection has become, as it was for Mary and others, the first act for all of us. And today is another opportunity to renew our faith in Jesus and his love. Our lives are lives of witnesses. And when people see us in the world, they either recognize the risen Lord or some other lesser God that we have chosen. We risk today shaking off this reality, going about business as usual, as it was uh, before we entered this holy season. But instead, we choose to be here, you and I. We stay, stay here, we sit here, we stand here, and, and all humanity, uh, we proclaim that the grave will not hold us down not in this world or the next. And when that day arrives, we promise to trip that he too will be raised. He too will be raised. And that there is nothing that will separate him ever from the love of God because of Jesus and his, uh, his uh, resurrection. Now, I can promise you that... <laughs> We will all be tempted in the next six days. We just will. Life will go on. <laughs> and we will be pulled and tugged. And this does not make us hypocrites. Rather, it makes us human. <laughs> who have real jobs in a real world. Who have real friends. Who have our own troubles. And who have friends who have troubles. Right? It just makes us human. But what we proclaim in this church is that God still loves us, even in our failures. It's not like we deny our failures. We don't deny our sin. We don't deny our brokenness. We don't deny how hard it is to do this living with the resurrected Lord. No, we claim it's hard. But that doesn't mean we stop the proclamation or the witness. In fact, that should empower us to say, I have fallen away from you today, and I turn back to you. You're going to make that very same promise in the baptismal covenant. It's one of my favorite lines. When you fall, will you return? Yeah. Why? Because of today. Because of the resurrection. I'll return over and over and over again. Whether it has been one day, one week since I came, years since I've, you know, darkened the door. It doesn't matter. God is present here waiting to have you return. All you have to do, all we have to do, is like the woman, is like the woman who dared in the middle of a crowd reach out in the Scripture and touch the hem of his garment. <laughs> That's all it is, to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. And I know and I believe every day when we risk that, we will be yanked right out of the grave, right out of the mess. Doesn't mean it'll be easier, but we won't be alone anymore. And Tripp, that's what we promise. You will never, ever be alone. Your whole family, this whole family and every...
Christian witness who we speak for today is present to help you in your life grow in Christ and to know no matter how far away you go, no matter how good it is or bad, the resurrection of our Lord promises love. And that's what we aim to do. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.